again. Okay, hey guys, I'm back um, with the second half of this painting. Um, as you can see, I've zoomed in just a little bit. I'm gonna be probably just working on the face today. Um, I don't know, we'll see, we'll see where it goes. I don't really have a total plan. In fact, um, it's taken me a few days of you know, doing other things and uh, I, I'm still like, super excited about my original plan, but I have realized more and more that I need to be careful when I'm doing these videos not to um, tell you that I'm gonna do a certain thing and then, and then stick with that plan because that usually is not the most conducive for a really good painting. I need to just do what I need to do and uh, I'll go ahead and talk, but I'll try to do it the way that I would normally do it without telling you guys um, <laughs> what the plan is until I'm actually doing it. I hope that makes sense. Um, and if you're an artist, I hope that you do it that way too. Uh, you know, there's, there's the plan and then there's the being the artist, which I guess for, for better or worse, that's just how you're gonna get the best, best work. All right, so if you saw the other video, the first half of this, then you'll know what I'm painting here. But uh, I'll show you there. So I've zoomed in on it a little bit. So since I'm working on just her face, I'm zoom in. this is kind of a terrible photo actually. It was just taken with my phone. Not a great quality one, but I actually like Um, sometimes I like it when it's a little bit less uh, lower quality thing, that uh, low quality photo, and that sometimes forces me to to make things up, and and that's usually a good thing. Need more paint on the brush. You know, these these sable brushes work great when they've been kind of fully loaded with paint. But if I try to treat them too uh, carefully and put just a tiny little bit of paint on them and sort of tickle things, then they, they don't work as well for me. All right, I'm just building up the highlights, trying to focus just on the on the brightest, uh, or uh, the biggest differences, I should say. Again, referencing the the photo, but not not really trying to be like super true to it. You know, I I've painted Lizzie so many times that I. I know what she looks like, of course. She's my daughter. <laughs> I know what she looks like, but even more, I've painted her so many times that I, I know in detail what her face looks like. And it's relatively easy for me to, to get a likeness without having to try too hard. But uh, also, I'm not really necessarily going for a likeness. Um, and I've said it before that uh, sometimes I'll use that, use my knowledge of what the person looks like as uh, kind of a standard to, to tell me if I've gotten it at least to look like a, a human, <laughs> you know, if it looks like the person, it looks accurately like the person, then obviously it looks like a, a person. Um, but the intention is not necessarily to look, make it look like that person as much as it is to get the, get the feeling across. And, uh, then if it happens to look like the person, then that's, uh, that's, that's fine, and I'm certainly not steering away from that on purpose either. I'm also not being totally accurate with the colors. Again, that's intentional because, first of all, because the photo itself isn't accurate to real life, uh, as a photo never is. And depending on my lighting here in the studio, and the time of day that it is, if you've got reflected light, you know, everything's gonna change. I'm just trying to get it to look right within the painting, just responding to the painting itself more than the, than the photo. I like this pose because it's a little bit more, uh, got some attitude, a little bit more than I usually do. I, I feel myself kind of leaning that way with my work. I kind of go back and forth on that. Sometimes I'm really, 
going for a very uh, traditional look. And other times I get really sick of that traditional look. <laughs> it's kind of, it seems very uh, saccharine to me sometimes, like too sweet. And I find that if I paint uh, a traditional looking subject, it, it usually feels that way to me unless it's an actual happening that I happen to cross. You know, if I find somebody you know, out working in the garden with a dress on, then I'm always excited to see that. And um, if I uh, am feeling brave, I'll go and talk to them and ask, them, ask if I can photograph them. And that's, I love that kind of thing. But if it's not a real life situation, and if I just sort of make up or try to recreate that situation, um, it usually ends up feeling forced and kind of fake. And that's, as a painting, it usually works, but as an experience, it, it's definitely lacking. Which means that, in essence, the painting is also uh, lacking depth. Even if nobody else sees it, I still feel it. There are some minor changes here in, uh, in temperature. I'm only, I'll show you for a second, my palette. As you can see, I'm only using one, two, three, four, five, six, seven colors, I'm not using that one. But uh, for those of you who didn't see the last video, this is Burnt Sienna, uh, Lizard and Crimson, uh, Azo Red, medium or light, can't remember which now, uh, Cad Yellow Hue, Ivory black, titanium white, ultramarine blue. This is phthalo blue, but I'm not using that. I only use that sometimes. Let's see if I can get this to go back to where, where it was. All right, so back to the painting. Um, I was talking about the, the temperature swings. So I'm, I'm using black kind of in place of blue. And now, if you see women wear makeup, uh, eyeshadow is frequently in the blue range. And I always kind of as a, I guess as a kid, used to wonder about that. Like, why do people choose blue as an eyeshadow color? It's so unnatural. <laughs> but uh, if you look at eyelids, they actually are kind of more of a bluish hue. And I'm not sure why that is. My daughter here isn't wearing an ounce of makeup, and yet those natural tones still lean that direction. Uh, frequently, the the chin area is a little bit more on the yellow. Uh, I almost don't want to say this because I don't want any of you to accidentally think that it's like a rule and to start looking for it. Uh, but. Frequently, to me, it seems that uh, the bottom half, half of the face is more of a yellowish brown or yellowish skin tone, and up above, it's it can be, um, certainly in the cheeks and the nose, more pink, and up, up on the forehead, it's uh, frequently more pink. But now that I've said that, just forget it, because it really just depends on your exact situation that you're in, your, you know, the person that you're painting at the time and the exact lighting situation. So while it, it can be interesting to, to learn what to look for, kind of be really careful not to, not to rely on those things. So I, I should say in this particular photo, her, you know, for whatever reason, there's a little bit more yellow down at the bottom than there is at the top. And so I just take those cues from the photo and and uh, bring it out in a way that's believable. I put in some darks here. Mix some black and and burnt sienna. 
Now my, my black is a super strong color. It's just a, a different brand than the Burnt Sienna is. It's a stronger color. So I find that with this mixture, I have to use just a tiny bit of black and, and um, maybe 25% black and 75% uh, Burnt Sienna, and it still looks black. And so if I want it to actually look brown, I have to put quite a bit more Burnt Sienna. Again, that's just brands. You know, the, It's a high quality paint, but it has fillers in it. And it's frequently better for me because I don't usually use a thick, a thick paint. Or sorry, I don't usually use. I don't know, for whatever reason. Sometimes they go thin, sometimes they go thick. But I've found that the that the uh, cheaper paint it's cheaper, but still extremely high quality uh, because as the fillers in it, it uh, works better for me. Some of my favorite paints are actually the cheaper ones. I like Winton quite a bit. I like the other paints too. But since they handle differently, I actually usually find myself going back to Winton. Maybe because I'm used to it. Maybe just because it works better for me, for my technique. So whereas before I was kind of, you know, I was hitting the highlights in the face and then I was getting some of the halftone darks and now I'm hitting the, you know, the real strong darks. And I don't have to do much, you know, it's just, just little, little points that are almost like points of reference, kind of like how I was, uh, laying out and measuring the, the points of reference for the head and different parts of the body before, before I started. Um, I'm kind of just doing layer after layer of little points of reference. You know, right now I'm doing the, the darker parts, just these little tiny points that really serve to, to tell the whole story with, uh, with very little actual detail. As you can see just in the past, uh, how long has it been? 12 minutes. I've, on from more or less a sketch to to something that uh, is, is pretty close to being done. You know, that's too dark there. I'll fix that in a second. So I like to load up my brush pretty heavily, but then also add a little bit of thinner. Uh, just get to a point where it's I don't know, halfway between where it comes out of the tube and you know, between that thickness and the thinness of like, if I were to do a wash, so it's somewhere in between, it tends to be really good for, for like detail work like this. And I need a sharp edge for getting this, the outer edge of the, of the eyelash. And I want it to be a little bit softer right there, so I just dragged, dragged that with my finger and uh, it sort of just fans it out and softens it the way that eyelashes do. Sorry, I'm not looking right at you. I, it's hard for me to get myself to to look straight at the camera. <laughs> I'm looking instead of at my screen, so sorry about that. But hopefully you're not staring at me anyway. You're looking more at the painting. Because that's probably more interesting. <laughs> Just more of the same thing, just hitting parts that sort of need a little bit more, more, more detail. And when I started this, um, she had a little bit more of a masculine feel to her and I've been uh, trying to very carefully um, bring it to the, to the feminine side, you know, make it look like like her. But uh, but also there's something a little bit edgy about, about this pose and um, uh, there is a slightly masculine side to, to the feeling of this. Uh, and to me it's kind of interesting. You can see I use my fingers a lot. I like to do that. It might be 
too high, possibly. Oh, I like that. Yeah, that's turning out great. subtleties in eyes. If you, if you paint eyes too, you know, too black and white and too sharp edged and too, you know, a lot of line stuff, it's, it's not as interesting as if you just do a shape. Um, for example, hopefully you can see this. I'll do this and then erase it. So if somebody were to paint an eye, you know, like, like that, it's not, that's not a perfect eye, but, um, and here I am trying to get it perfect. Anyway, you get the idea. If you were to do that and paint the pupil and you know whatever, uh, that's not going to be as realistic as, say, like a shape that's like that, and maybe a tiny bit of an indication of the 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 shadow below it. And that looks cartoony, whereas this looks real. And granted, there's a lot of subtleties in there, but. Once you get those subtleties, you know, it's still a shape. It's not, it doesn't have much of an outline. I hope you see the difference there. Um, okay, back to the painting. So I did go a little bit too high on that. I'm not quite happy with how dark this got. So I'm gonna try to lift that just a little bit. I'm gonna clean my brush first. You know, where I've let this dry a few days um, since the last video, since what I'm painting over is, is now dry, there, it, it reacts with what I'm painting on top of it a little bit differently than if I was doing wet into wet. Um, there are some benefits to, to both, you know, to wet into wet or also to letting it dry a bit. So that's a little bit off still. You know, I'll, I'll, where that is basically the, the dividing line, the line of uh, symmetry. You know, her head is slightly tilted, so it's not right in the middle, it's slightly this way. But I still want to be aware of, of what the symmetry is and try to get it right. I introduce a little bit of red in there into my dark. A little bit of thinner. Oh, in my last video, somebody asked about my, my thinner that I'm using. Um, let me show you what it is. So it's this, um, So by, by Eco House, it's the same people that make like neutral thin. Um, they do several uh, cool place. They try to do things that are um, all natural and um, better for the environment. And hopefully that means better for our health too. Um, natural or orange terpene. This is not essential oil. Um, some people had a question about that. So don't, don't try to use orange essential oil for painting, it probably won't evaporate all the way and you'll be left with some, with some, some problems. Um, I've also used and I have um, in my arsenal here some lavender spike oil and that's kind of the same thing. It's not lavender essential oil, but it's, it's kind of the, the turpentine version, um, but from, it's the equivalent of what, what turpentine is, as is this orange stuff, um, except Whereas turpentine is from pine trees, uh, this orange terpene is from, of course, orange peels, and the lavender spike oil is the terpene from lavender, lavender flowers. They all work equally, equally well. And just, uh, I, I, I find that I would rather work with natural things, and that I, I seem to be affected less by them than the. Um, uh, lab made alternatives. All right, I'm going to 
gonna put in a little bit of the the white of the eye, which which is not white. Be careful, be super careful about the whites of eyes. They're barely, barely lighter and barely uh, cooler than the surrounding skin. And if you go even rem remotely white, it's gonna look ridiculous. It's more or less a skin tone with just a, a tad more. like blue or black, you know, something to cool it down. In fact, white alone is a cool color, so... Um, so just by mixing a little bit more white with your skin tone, I mean, to the smallest degree, you'll probably be pretty close. Yeah, not quite right. She's not quite looking in the same direction in both eyes. This is something that you just kind of have to uh, go back and forth on until you get it right. I'll stand back and see how it looks. Hmm. The thing is, so this one is actually probably more correct um, based on the photo, but this one has more of the the emotion that I want. And so I think I'm gonna instead of ma make this one match that, I'm gonna make that one match that. Or at least I'll try. Hopefully I don't butcher it so bad that I have to start over on this eye. And luckily, since the other um, layer is dry underneath, I, I, if I needed to, I could do that. Sometimes that's the best way to go. Because if you start having to fiddle with it too long, it really loses its, its sense of um, immediacy. It, doesn't, it no longer looks like it was fun to paint and came, came about quickly and organically. It looks like you killed it. <laughs> so sometimes if you do too much or too small of brush strokes, and sometimes it's better just to erase that one part and start over. In fact, I'm gonna leave it alone for just a minute while I work on some other parts. Just gonna darken the side of the nose here. Just, just a little bit. I want the the shadows that are already there to remain the strongest ones. So this is a, a mixture of a little bit of red with black, and of course white, because that was already on my brush. Kind of the skin tone that was already there. I'm gonna bring in some more of that down here to make a nicer, softer transition between light and shadow at the bottom of her nose. Looks like it needs to, the light needs to go down a little bit further. Let's see if I can get something close to that color to match. A little bit more red for the side here. There, now she's got a pretty nose. So that looks more realistic now. Now back to this See, now it feels too low. Well, let's see. Oh, that's hard. It's always hard with the eyes. I need to move that pupil again. Just a little, little bit. Sometimes it's not so much a matter of moving it as just tweaking it on one side. Okay, now the eyes are both looking in the same direction. Now it's just a matter of getting them to match shape-wise. 
So in the photograph, she was looking straight at, at me, you know, at the camera. And in this, she's looking just barely over the shoulder. And you can, you can change that anytime you want in your painting. You know, make them look wherever you want. Um, if they start to look too far, then it would look unnatural. So, you know, people tend, tend to turn their heads if they start looking out of the corner of their eye. Um, the corner of the eye looks a little bit shifty. Um, so I want this to look natural, but, uh, but I don't necessarily have to focus her eyes right on the camera as she was in the photograph. Just a little bit wider here, maybe. Now I'll keep on working on that. Maybe if I add a little bit of the the white on on this outer side, maybe soften that. My way of working is very anti-formulaic, and if you haven't realized that by now, then now you know. And are aware that I'm aware of it. It's formulaic is just soul killing to me. If you have a certain way of painting every time, ugh. I get I do this in my career. I do this for you know six to nine months or so. I'll I'll catch myself. Well, I should say every six to nine months, I'll catch myself accidentally having fallen into a formulaic way of working, and I'll look back on the work that I've just produced. And <laughs> it bores me to death. In fact, I, 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 I hate it um, to, to some extent. Um, I, uh, I, I change often. Uh, my style, uh, not really my style. It's, style is just something that you have. Kind of like your signature. But, um, but I'll change the way that I'm the way that I approach things. Um, in essence, I'm always trying to get away from a formula and just trying to explore new things. So the way that I work is very much intuitive. You know, I, I go back and forth. I don't usually know ahead of time uh, what I'm, what I'm going to paint. If, if I did, that would take the fun out of it. Why would I paint it anyway if I already knew exactly what I was going to do? I prefer to just respond to the, to the subject as as I go along and, and to the painting itself as I go along and make changes as needed. Um, for those of you who have watched my, my slightly older videos of, um, you know, plein air painting out, outdoors, the, the same process goes into that. It's just, I mean, if you've seen those, you know how much I change them from the, from the actual uh, object or scene that I'm, that I'm looking at. It's just a much quicker process. All of those things, all those decisions are kind of compressed in time but it's the same process, you know, just more intuitive. I'm gonna work on that eye. And you're, you're seeing it at an angle too, you're not quite seeing it perfectly straight on. Let me show you straight on, just for a minute. Just so you can get an idea of what that looks like. You can tell that my eyes are not quite right of course, she has one eyebrow raised, so you know the face is not entirely um, symmetrical. Anyway, sorry, I'm gonna move this back. But uh, oops, I don't know, it's too close. I can't work. There we go. That'll work. So you can probably see how it still needs to change, but it's. Sometimes if you hit a problem area, you just can't seem to figure out and, you know, just, just move on. That's usually the easiest way to, to handle it. Move on to other things that you kind of have an idea, a better idea of how to, how to fix and how to handle. There are some neat little uh, highlights on her lower eyelids here. There's still skin color, they're in the pink range but they're quite a bit lighter than 
on the other surrounding skin. And it also, I like these parts because they, they tend to add a nice little bit of life. Kind of the same as a highlight in an eye, but you sometimes don't get a nice highlight in an eye depending on the lighting. And frequently that little bit down there can kind of do the same thing. You know, it makes it look wet. You know, we all have tears in our eyes. We have, have wet eyes and the, the edges of our eyes are, are wet too and they, they glisten when the light hits them. And this one, there, there does happen to be a, a nice little highlight on one of her eyes. I want to be really careful not to overdo it. I'll put it in and you know, hopefully it It serves, the, serves its purpose. Let's see here. There we go. That's better. And then if I... There is a really small highlight in the other eye. I think I'll go ahead and put it in, but I want it to definitely be smaller. Less noticeable than, than this one. I think that's nice. There's a little bit of life to it. Similarly, similarly, there's a highlight on the lips. Brings me back to the idea of makeup. You know, talked about the the cool uh, eyeshadow. Uh, it came about because it's you know naturally that way and we're just you know the makeup that people use is just emphasizing that same thing with lip gloss or lipstick lips are naturally red and people are just emphasizing that with um with the common colors of lipstick or lip gloss you know they're naturally shiny and naturally red and uh, the makeup is funny that way i'm not a fan of it personally i usually ask anyone who models for me to come with no makeup or, or very minimal. Because those, those subtleties really exist on a natural, unpainted face, but uh, they're, they're more subtle and more beautiful in my opinion. And they're not covered up by, by a false color. a little bit of rosiness in her cheeks. I'm using, that's where I really like to use the uh, alizarin crimson. It's really, really subtle. Uh, yeah, it's a, not quite subtle enough, but I can blend it a little bit and see how it works. Uh, that's all right, I, I, I think I like that. Maybe a little bit here. This cheek is making her look like she has makeup on for sure. But again, you know, these colors are there. They just uh, are a lot more subtle. Obviously mine is just my opinion about makeup, but, but I've got a strong one <laughs> about it. <laughs> Let's see, I told you this, this one I felt was a little bit too dark, that line under her nose. I think possibly, uh, it's not necessarily that it's too dark, it's just that it has the wrong uh, shape of the brush stroke. Is that, is that getting too light every time I move? Let's see here, I guess it's all right.
Now, <clears throat> I know a lot of you are expecting me to to do this, you know, it would be nice if I could do this on a schedule, you know, share these things on YouTube. But the fact is, I sometimes I'm held back in my productivity if I if I know that I have to perform well in front of the camera, you know? <laughs> and sometimes I just need to allow myself to, um, to make mistakes in the privacy of my own studio without an audience. So you know, sometimes it may be a while before I, I post another thing. I do like sharing uh, what I'm doing. It's enjoyable for me. But if I stay away for a little while, it's just that I have encountered a, uh, a situation where I need to, it's really a growth situation. I encountered a, a period where I need to uh, experiment without any extra pressure. Or, you know, maybe I'll just get over myself and <laughs> just allow myself to, to fail publicly. Frankly, I would love to be on the receiving end of, of something like that, where, you know, if one of my favorite artists uh, were to, in essence, mess up, because not because I want to see them mess up, but because it allows me to see how they would um, uh, get over that, you know, and fix that problem. But it's just human nature to want to hide our problems. I'm certainly not immune to that. But, again, I'll try to I'll try to post often, even when I don't necessarily feel like it. <laughs> but frankly, it's always easier for me to not post a video, you know, if I were just to, in a time where I need to be productive, I probably won't post as often because it actually is harder. Now, isn't that funny how it looks, <laughs> looks like I've really made her look Kind of like she has a, a lot of makeup on, but she doesn't have any. Um, and usually I would uh, change it to not look as painted, look, look as uh, made up. But in this case, uh, you know, it's always a case by case basis. In this case, I, I kind of like it. Uh, maybe I really like it. because it is so painted, painted up, uh, doesn't quite look like my daughter. <laughs> but that's fine. Again, going back to what I originally said, it's not really about that. It's just about getting the, the feeling. And, uh, and with this pose, obviously, there, there's a certain feeling that, it, that was already there, regardless of how I paint it. And I think the slightly more made up face while not being quite as uh, uh, traditional looking as maybe what I usually do. It, it tends to emphasize the feeling of this painting, I, I think. And the feeling that I was originally going for with the pose. And I like it. I think it's, uh, yeah, th this painting is a little bit experimental for me. Uh, kind of, kind of all my paintings are experimental. I'm always trying to learn something new. Again, trying to avoid that formulaic approach. There's something about the, the dark parts under her eyes. You know, she. It's more about the lighting here. You know, the high up lighting, the strong light that's that's giving that, um, than about <laughs> her sleep lack of sleep or anything like that. Um, but it, uh, it's obviously a little bit darker under her eyes than you might normally see in like a daytime lighting situation. But uh, again, I think that tends to kind of give it a nicer 
or it emphasizes the feeling a little bit more. All right, I think I'm at the point where I'm gonna have to just let it settle a little bit in my mind. You know, not, not do too much more for fear of overdoing it. Lower that hairline a little bit, just really subtly. And bring in, you know, in some places you want it to be really soft, in other places you want to make sure that whoever sees it knows where that hair is falling. You know, because some places are actually showing the hairline, whereas other places are just uh, showing a, an out of place strand of hair. And the out of place strands of hair, they can literally go anywhere. But the hairline, of course, needs to needs to be in the right place or else it's gonna look like she's balding or something. Hmm. Cool. Well, I'm really happy with this. All right, so Again, I, I, there's no way I'm going to be able to finish this painting on this on this video or even another one because it's. I think at this point it's going to be maybe a eight to ten session finishing up. But you know, I might share some of those things if I if I feel like uh, you could maybe learn from one of those uh, experiences. But here's basically what I'm going to do <laughs> with the rest of this painting. Now. This is kind of how I go forward from this point on with, with all my paintings. As much paint as possible in as little period of time. And when I say as much as possible, I'm talking like, well, it needs to be in the right place, but. Hmm. variety in the, the thickness of it. I don't want it to be distracting. But I do want to show that there's a major, major difference between the finesse in here compared to the rest of it. You know, leave some of it brush strokes, make some of it thicker palette knife. Maybe I'll add a little bit of color in there. Let's see what happens if I do a little bit. Let's see here. Maybe gray would have been a better choice there. But at this point, I think I wanna just go back and forth quite a bit. I'm really just playing now. You know, you see, I've never seen this in real life, but some flamboyant artists, particularly less in real life than in like commercials and things and like caricatures of, of this. But you know, you see commercials of artists throwing paint against a canvas. And uh, you know, when I used to paint extremely detailed and really, really like, like fine finished works um, that frankly I'm bored of. <laughs> uh, they weren't as good, but they were finely finished. 
but I always, I found myself wanting to just be one of those artists I saw in commercials. Um, you know, just throwing paint against the canvas and I wanted to get a whole bucket or a whole tube of paint and just put it on there and not do anything with it after I've just squirted it on. And I find that I've now kind of come to the point where I can have the fun of really just literally throwing on paint and trying to make something look just fun to look at, you know, almost like you want to touch it. You don't want to touch paintings once they dry, that could cause problems with the paint. But, um, but maybe with a glove or something, somebody could touch it or the back of the fingernails. I just want it to feel tactile and, and literally be that way. Um, but that compared to that, you know, it's just this nice, um, a nice balance, I think, back and forth. It sort of emphasizes the, the finesse in this and also emphasizes the, uh, and showcases the fact that it is still paint, which makes it even more fun if you can get a certain amount of detail here, there, and usually in the hands. Of course, the, there's not much of the hands showing in this one. But, um, goodness, I, I love this way of painting. And uh, it's, it's evolved over the course of a couple of years. Um, yeah, I'm just having a lot of fun with it. Again, I kind of don't know where where it's going. I thought I was gonna paint this um, more of a brown color, as it was in the in the photograph. But uh, just playing with what I can add. Maybe introduce some pink or something. Uh, just various colors. Some of these things might look like they're. I'm trying to be like a pattern or something on the shirt. In a way, it's maybe a little bit emphasizing the actual 3D qualities of it. And for those of you who watched this to this point, you know, I, I, I hope it's worth it to you to have gotten to this because I think this is where it really gets fun. My Flora Jean is in her half of the studio right next to me and she's printing out some some of her new creations now. Oh, that, that reminds me. If you want to see my work, um, you can go to my website, which is www.trentgoodmanson.com, spelled the same way it is on here on YouTube. And I'll try to remember to put a link in the description. Um, also look me up at just Simply Trent Goodmanson on Instagram. Instagram is where I post, you know, things I'm currently working on, and it's usually after a month or so that I, you know, when I've painted five or six paintings or more, I'll kind of put the, that whole batch of new paintings on the website. But if you want to keep really up to date, go to my Instagram account, and of course I'll continue to show you works that I'm working on here on YouTube. But, uh, and Laura Jean's website is laurajeansmagazine.com. She's also on TikTok and Etsy and Ko-Fi or Coffee, Ko-Fi, I think, K-O-F-I. If you want to see her work, vastly different from my own, but I really enjoy it and I think you might like it too. I'll put a link to that down below as well. I'm getting lost in the process now. This is just really, I feel like I, I do this type of part so that I can, I'm, so I can give myself permission to do this rest of this part. And this lends a, uh, legitimacy <laughs> to, to the rest of it. Makes it look like it's a real painting instead of just me not knowing what to do. Can you even see, yeah, there you go. You can see what I'm doing. Some brown, uh, try some blue in there. Thank you. 
as a as a teenager in the early early 20s I just kind of had decided in my mind that I hated all abstract art or modern art um, I, I think I just didn't get it or maybe it's because I saw very few examples of good <laughs> good modern art um, but since then I've seen many many examples of amazing abstract art and it's it would be extremely difficult to to do that to do what those artists do properly um, you know that's surprisingly well thought out and I feel like I am certainly not masterful at it but I've learned a lot recently as I've, as I've allowed myself to to play you know the principles of design and uh, balance and repetition are all just the same and in traditional you know this kind of work versus this kind um, but they're harder to master <laughs> in pure abstraction but I feel like I've gotten better at it as I've allowed myself to go with pure abstraction let's see maybe I'll brush some in so I want to bring it over here but not be quite so you know the same I'll think about that. It feels, I'm not quite sure what I want to do over here yet. Maybe I want to make that brown instead. I don't know. I'll bring it to the point where I don't know what to do yet. And then, uh, I guess that's the point at which I shouldn't do anything or, or just try different things something I haven't before. Try connecting those shapes, I don't know. If that works then I'll keep it and if not I'll keep working with it. Maybe I'll make that whole thing be... I want some of that brown to show, to show through for sure, but maybe I'll try to connect them as one big shape. I'm not sure. Mix that one a little bit more. making a modern work of art right here completely abstract but it's so much fun Show you one more thing and then I'll, I'll leave you for today. Um, I'm gonna grab a piece of paper or cardboard and I'm just gonna drag that across here. Just a second. Oh, this will work. Just a tiny little postcard size or a business card size panel that I had made. simplified it's more like one big shape a little less rigid but it's still it still is within that that big shape that's supposed to be there hmm, okay well I hope you've enjoyed this this has been uh, I've given you uh, I've shown you more of myself in this video than, than ever before because I've, I've allowed you to see me kind of uh, battle it out a little bit in the painting and frankly this is, this is more often how it works. Um, uh, I, I'm not a performer by trade, I'm an artist and uh, I kind of I've sort of implied that I, I'm not a natural on YouTube um, but I'll, 
also you may have felt the implication that I, I really struggle with sharing my process. Not because I feel like it's secret, but because it's um, a little bit of, you know, raw, I guess. It, it, it puts myself out there, uh, opens my, my soul up a little bit. And uh, I don't have a natural tendency to want to do that, to share that with anybody other than my family, you know, that's really close, or, or friends that are really close. And uh, so um, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope this is helpful and uh, hope you feel of the, the spirit of what I'm trying to do and uh, hope you can find that same spirit in your own art. All right, enjoy the rest of your day. I'll, I'll, I'll keep you updated on this thing. It may take a day, maybe I'll just bang it out today and if so, I'll, if I find myself getting in a groove, I'll, I'll go ahead and turn on the video and make a short one. And if not, I'll, I'll, I'll still just show you what I've gotten um, maybe at the end of the week or end of the year if it takes that long. <laughs> we'll see. I'm not quite sure yet. All right. Well, thanks for joining me and I'll see you pretty soon.